Welcome. We're going to start talking about integer exponents, and we're going to begin with an overview of bases and powers. Our goals are specifically to identify these things called exponentials or powers, and to do some evaluation and some simplification on exponentials. I'd like to start out with a brief review um, of some things that you are already very familiar with, just to jog your memory a little bit. If we look at a statement like 2 times 5 equals 10, there are some uh, specific terms that we can use about these numbers. We would call the 2 and the 5 factors. And the 10 would be referred to as the product. We could look at a slightly more interesting uh, multiplication statement. We can look at 2 times 2 times 2, which is equal to 8. What you'll notice here is that we have 2, which is repeated. 2 is a repeated factor. It would be nice if we could write this in some shorthand way where we didn't have a whole string of twos across the page. And the way we're going to do that is by writing the number 2 and putting this little superscript on it, and the superscript is uh, the number 3. The number 3 is how many times that 2 appeared. Um, we would call this... 2 to the third power, or we would refer to it as the exponential 2 to the third. This exponential is said to have the base 2. That's the factor that we're working with. And it has the power 2 to the fourth power. The power or exponent. I want to take a moment and look at some examples of uh, exponentials and just identify the base and the exponent or the power in those. Let's first take a look at negative 2 to the fourth power. We could write this as a negative 1 times 2 to the fourth. What we could rec recognize then when we look at our exponential, which is this piece here, is that we have a base of 2 and a power of 4. The negative 1 is not part of the base. It's very important to notice that, um, that the negative 1 is not part of the base. The reason that is the case is because it's not in parentheses. And you'll see an example in a couple of um, minutes where the negative is inside the parentheses and it changes our outcome. If we want to evaluate this, that's simply going to be negative 1 times a 16. 2 to the fourth power is 16. And that gives us a negative 16 for an answer. Another example of an exponential, um, one involving a variable, would be 3 times z to the seventh power. In this case, our power, or our exponent, is 7. And that's 
fairly straightforward. You look for the superscript and that's it. Um, our base, however, is z. It is not 3z. Again, um, the 3 is not in parentheses. One way you can think of this that um, many people find helpful is to think that the exponent or the power is only attached to its nearest neighbor. Now, if its nearest neighbor happens to be in parentheses, then the entire unit that's in parentheses is going to get the exponent. So let's take a look at an example like that. Suppose you have a negative 9x, and the entire negative 9x is in parentheses, and we raise that to the power 2. Well, what does that mean? What that means is we've got a negative 9x times a negative 9x. If we just looked at this, a negative times a negative is going to give us a positive. 9 times 9 is 81, so we'll have an 81, and x times x is going to be x squared. In our original, in our original statement, the base is negative 9x, everything that's inside those parentheses, and the power is 2. Okay, now we can rewrite uh, in words what we've been working with. We've been working with exponentials, and what I would like to emphasize is that the exponential, also known as a power, is simply a base, and that base can be a number or a letter, a variable representing a number, and it is raised to a power. The power represents the number of times that the base is repeated if we were to write out um, the uh, multiplication problem in, say, we could call it longhand. And that is the end of this segment.